Welcome to Electro Online, and here we have an example of a, an absorbing Markov chain. Now here we have three stores. You can see that store A will contain or keep all of its customers. There's no customers going back to B or C once they've gone to A. And there's customers from B and C that will always go to A. Some that will go between B and C and some will remain at B and some will remain at C. But since none of the customers will ever go back from A to B or from A to C, this is what we call an absorbing Markov chain. And so what we're trying to do here is find the stable distribution matrix. Where will the customers eventually end up? And of course, you already know that 100% of customers will end up at A and none will end up at B and C. But will that be the case when we actually calculate it? And so we're going to go back to our traditional method of calculating the stable distribution matrix by saying that if we multiply the transition matrix, the matrix that contains all the transition probabilities, if we multiply it times the eventual stable matrix, we should get back the stable matrix. So we're going to use this technique. And of course, in this case, we're going to set up a matrix where we come from the three states A, B, and C, and then we go to the three states A, B, and C. So let's first build up our uh, what we call transition matrix. So from A to A, we have 100%, that is 1. From A to B would be 0, and from A to C would be 0. So you can see that's already the characteristic of an absorbing Markov chain or an absorbing uh, what we call a transition matrix of a Markov, uh, an absorbing Markov chain. Now from B to A, from B to A, we get 0 0.2. From B to B, we get 0 0.7. That means from B to C, it's 0 0.1. From C to A is 0 0.3. From C to B, 0 0.1. And from C to C, 0 0.6. So here's the transition matrix representing our situation right here. So now we're going to multiply that matrix times uh, our as presumed, uh, what we call stable um, stable distribution matrix. So we have P times X stable is equal to X stable, like that. So when we take our matrix right here, we have 1, 0, 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 point, oop, and I forgot the point 0.1 here, 1, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.6. We multiply that times A, B, and C. So we should get A, B, and C back. We also, of course, know that A plus B plus C must equal 1. All right, so let's use our traditional technique and see what we get. So we're going to multiply this row times this column to get equal to A. So 1 times A, that would be A plus 0.2B plus 0.3C is equal to A. On the second equation, we multiply this row times this column. So we get 0A plus 0.7b plus 0. Oh, let's see, plus 0.1c is equal to b. And finally, we multiply this row times this column. So it's 0a plus 0.1b plus 0.6c is equal to c. Now, if I take these two equations right here, notice that those two equations only have b and c in them. So two equations and two unknowns, I should be able to solve those simultaneously. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to multiply both equations by 10 to make it a little easier to get rid of the decimal. So when I do that, I get 7b plus c is equal to 10b. And then here I get b plus 6c is equal to c. Now I'm going to combine things a little bit. I'm going to solve both equations for c. Let's see, I can solve the first equation for c. So let's go up here and Combine the B, so 7B subtract from there, I get C is equal to 3B. And then if I go ahead and solve this for C, I get 6C minus C, that's 5C equals negative B. So this becomes 5C when I move this C across, equals when I move the B across, negative B, or C is equal to negative 1, 5B. And if I then plug it over here, C is equal to negative 1, 5B. Here I have an obvious discrepancy. I know that at the same time, C cannot equal 3B and C cannot equal negative 1 over 5B. That's impossible. The only way that is possible, that is only possible if B is equal to C is equal to 0. 
because if C and B are equal to zero, then zero equals zero and zero equals zero, and then that would be correct. So if B and C are equal to zero, and since we know that A plus B plus C is equal to one, I can then say that A plus zero plus zero equals one, or A equals one, which means our stable distribution matrix will be one, zero, zero, which is what we had expected in the first place because we know that customers will always end up drifting towards A and never coming back to B and C. So over time, all customers will end up at A and zero customers will end up at B and C with this transition matrix. So you can see that you get something that looks kind of strange. It's not possible unless you assume that both B and C is equal to zero and therefore A must equal one. Now, we have a better technique to find the eventual uh, distribution matrix, the stable distribution matrix, and we'll show you those techniques. Those are specific for absorbing Markov chains, but I want to show you that even if you use the traditional method for any sort of Markov chain, you end up coming to the same conclusion if you think about it when you get these kind of obviously strange res uh, results when you try to calculate it. Anyway, that's a nice example, and we'll show you the actual technique in the future videos.